The Helena Bighorns begin their journey towards the Frazier Cup on the road for Game 1 of the Frontier Division semifinals against the Butte Cobras. Here's a chance. Helena shoots, scores. Braden Cunningham ends the scoreless tie at 13-26. The Cobras tie the game in the third period, followed by a go-ahead goal shortly after. And he's coached by Crook. Here comes Crook. He's in all alone. Back to Crook. Shoots. Scores! Patty, Patty, Patty. Crooks puts it away to get the Cobras a 2-1 lead in the first game of the Fraser Cup. Butte is only 60 seconds away from taking game one of the semifinals, but have to stave off a last second push from Helena. There's a chance, shot score. That's a Helena goal. So with 40 seconds remaining, the Helena Bighorns tie things up. So we will have overtime hockey here in Butte, America for the second time in one week. There's a chance for the Bighorns. Behind the Cobra goal, they look to work it out back out to the point. Cunningham puts a shot on that one wide. Turner gathers outside the circle. Here's a chance, save cross, another chance. Nets off, nets off! The net is off by referee Ron Law. The series now moves to the Helena Ice Arena for game two. And the fans don't have to wait long for the Bighorns to give them something to cheer about. That timing space like that just moving right away. There we go, baby! Just off the goal line, I think he beat Watery over his shoulder, and the Bighorns lead two to nothing. Aaron Rassel for Moore. Moore sends it across. Tip score! Andrew Deskin! Of a nice speed from Ty Moore. And the Bighorns lead three to nothing. 4.53 left here in the second period. Way to go to the net, baby. Helena goaltender Keaton French turned aside all 12 shots he faced in the third period helping the Bighorns clinch the series and will now face the Gillette Wild in the Frontier Division Final. Yeah, both games are intense games, you know, coming back there on Friday night and, you know, that's hockey and, you know, coming in our own barn on uh, Saturday night, a little bit different atmosphere, definitely playing in front of those fans is like no other place. So, you know, a little bit easier to come out and get the boots on and, and start wheeling around and scoring some more goals, so it's fun. Tyler Bloom, number 17, Helena, Montana. Yeah, no, he was on my uh, team 15 and 16's year in Colorado Springs, and he hasn't changed a second. He's still as big as ham he was back then. No, but uh, he's a good guy to have around. He's super positive, great locker room guy, and he's, he's an all right goalie, so we'll take that too. <laughs> Helena got off to a rough start in game one. The home team potted three unanswered goals against the struggling Bighorns squad through the first two periods of play. Wow, get fortunate right there, back door, Sky Solik from Severson. That's what we're looking for. Nice look, 
Solig on that far side of the slot and buried it, so. Darby McCarthy scored late in the frame and gave some momentum back to Helena going into the final period. Harlan Wotusik scored a power play goal late in the period, but the Wild answered back just a couple minutes later. Wild try to kick it up and out. Foster's going to get it up and out. Foster shoots. Goal! Empty netter with 10.7 seconds left. Anthony Foster. Gillette took game one decisively, five to two. A sold out game two at the Helena Ice Arena began in stark contrast to game one. Let's go! A rare St. Patrick's Day hockey game provided plenty of entertainment from the drop of the first puck. Pinching on the far side, down low, there's a feed in front, shot, SCORE! Cade Holland! And the Big Horns jump out in front, one to nothing! There's it up the boards, picked up at the point though by Garrett Bogan. Bogan as he throws it on, goal tip, SCORE! Big Horns tie the tank, Aldridge, with a tip in! Getting the tip in past Jake Turk and the Big Horns are out in front two to nothing here early in the first period. Nice, 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 nice shoot. Slips it in front, SCORE! TJ Norris! Taking the feed from Lyndon Orr! And the Big Horns strike early in the second period to take a four to nothing lead. Terrell has to hustle back. Leaves it down for Harlow with Tusik who feeds it back for Feebster. Now Feebster with a high shot, SCORE! Not sure if it got tipped in front. Ty Bloom may have got a stick on it. Ty Bloom is going to get it. He's headed to the hell of a bench with a big old smile on his face. A power play goal for the Bighorns. Extends their lead to five to nothing. And that is going to do it. The Bighorns are going to even this series at one with a five to nothing victory over the Gillette Wild, forcing a game three tomorrow night. Keaton French with his second shutout of the playoffs this season. Just like last year's postseason structure, the NA3HL's five division winners move on to the national tournament in St. Louis, and a sixth team would need to be selected as a wild card team to even the field. The highest seeded team that loses their division final would qualify for nationals as that sixth wild card team. And on the day of game three of the Frontier Division Finals, Helena learned that Granite City had lost their West Division final to the powerhouse Alexandria Blizzard and would therefore be the wild card team heading into St. Louis. As the Blizzard will move on and be the one seed at the Frazier Cup Championship. They'll take on, I believe, Texas at four o'clock on Wednesday. Granite City will be the sixth seed. So tonight means the winner plays on, and the loser is done for the season.
from the Helena Ice Arena in Montana's capital city. Welcome to Helena Bighorns Frontier Division Playoff Hockey. Good evening, I'm Scott Keith. It's all on the line tonight. The winner punching their ticket to the Frazier Cup next week in Missouri. Gillette set the pace early in game three, keeping Helena locked inside their own zone for much of the first five minutes of the game. However, it's a pace of play that the Wild are not accustomed to playing, and the Bighorns begin to push back. Chipped out but knocked down by Norris. For McCarthy. McCarthy shot, he scores! Darby McCarthy! And the Bighorns take a one to nothing lead here late in the first period. Tip to hand, here's Cam Cunningham with some room, Cunningham. They poke checked away, swatting at it, loose in the slot. Here's Bloom with a shot, he scores! Tyler Bloom recovering the rebound in front! Tyler Bloom with a power play goal for the Bighorns. Early here on the second, who lead now two to nothing. Here's a two on one chance. Andrew Deskin has Cade Holland. Deskin walking in, shot. Score! Andrew Deskin off the shoulder of Wheaton! It's in the net! Darby McCarthy! Gillette broke the shutout halfway through the third, and Helena finds itself in the penalty box allowing the Wild to begin to take the momentum. But the Bighorns still down two men here with a 4.08 to play. Silas Hughes, poke checked away. Cunningham throws it down. your Frontier Division champions once again. The Bighorns have less than 24 hours to get ready for their two-day bus trip to St. Louis. The team is looking to get to the Frazier Cup Finals this year and are feeling confident about their chances. TJ Norris, forward, number 27, from Mulville, Iowa. You know, it's my third year being at the Frazier. Um, third time total. Been here with another team before, too, so I'm excited. You know, one step closer here. I think... Uh Anything other than winning everything that we can win is a letdown for our season. I think we have a really good hockey team in this locker room, and uh, I think if we're going at all cylinders, I don't think anyone can stop us. They'll play a two-game round robin against other teams in their pool. Their first opponent, the Oregon Tradesman, a familiar foe from last year's showcase in Blaine, Minnesota. The Wisconsin-based team handed the Bighorns their only loss at the showcase in December, and the tradesmen go right after the Bighorns here in the opening game of the Frazier Cup Championship Tournament. Out of their own zone along the boards near side. Here's a center pass out on top and a goal! The tradesmen struck back first. Gives it the puck, gets deflected back in, and the puck is in, it's a goal! Helena needed a strong start to the second period if they were to have any chance of coming back in this game. And Tank Aldridge answered the call for the big one. The turnaround and slam it in, it's a goal! Pass 
taken. Here's a drive off of Frommel's, the rebound, no, and it goes in! And the Bighorns have tied this game. Trying to drive it through, trying to poke it through the crease. A shot and a goal on the power play! Wow! Good goal! Wow! A goal! As the Bighorns take their first lead of the game, it is Luke Corbin with his first postseason point of the season. It'll go. There's a fight for the puck. Now to Murr. Murr with a drive and a goal! Ten seconds to go in regulation. Walker brings it in, tries to get it around one defender. Can't quite do it. Corbin takes it away. Puck goes behind the goal. They'll try to center it here as time about to expire, and it does. We are heading to overtime. With ten seconds to go in overtime before we head to the shootout. Falconer with a slow pass forward, not going to get there. Holland sends it over, and Aldridge will get it over to the left. One right at the buzzer, and it's going to go over the top. Here's another turnaround try, a redirect in front, not going to get there. And it is time now for the shootout to decide this Fraser Cup Championship round robin pool B game. It'll be Helena to go first. It'll be Tyler Bloom out of Allen, Montana. You got it, you got it. Oh, shoot. Sure. Goes to the backhand and it's in. Yeah! Yeah, let's go, baby! Woo! Out of West Foot, Russia will bring it in. He'll start from the top. Goes to the forehand, now takes the shot, it's in! And we are tied in the shootout here. The Bighorns is Ty Moore of Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. He had 11 points in 12 regular season games as an assist in the postseason entering play today. Goes between the circles, sets up, takes the shot, and he scores! And at the moment, puts him up in front in the shootout, 2-1, to one, and it all comes down now to Cooper Ruthio of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Had a goal here today, three in the postseason and seven in the regular season. Ruthio starts to the left, stays to the left, now comes up to the four and goes to the shoot it and it's no good! Helena is going to win in the eighth round of the shootout, two to one, and get the extra point to win four to three. The Helena Bighorns. The overtime gives the Bighorns two points and the tradesmen a point for the overtime loss. Oregon won a close game against the Northeast Generals the next day, giving them three total points in their round-robin play. This means that in order for the Bighorns to advance to the semifinals, they must not lose tomorrow's game in regulation, since overtime guarantees a point. All ready for puck drop here tonight from the Recplex in St. Peter's, Missouri. Helena taking on Northeast. Try big rebound in front, second try, they score! What an opportunity, and Tyler Blow finishes a backhander. And it's 1-0, Big Horns. Centering pass, loose puck, they score! And it's two straight for Helena. Good right, folks. Good right. Out of boy, man. Shoot it, boys. All right, boys, all right. Thank you, Bill, 40 seconds under the power play. In front, they score! Power play goal! Another one here for Helena. Hey, that's light work, Drew. Oh, nice pass to your side, top shelf, what a goal! Holy cats, he hit that one with a backhand. Shelf the shelf, and the Generals are on the board. Everywhere, what a chance at a goal! Out in front, a quick snipe right off a of face off. A power play goal, and Helena puts the foot down. Woo! Camden Cunningham. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
and that's the final. This French does a little dab in the corner. Congratulations to the Helena Bighorns as they are moving on. They will play tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Hockey TV. I will see you then tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, 4 to 1. Helena wins. The Granite City Lumberjacks came into the Fraser Cup as the sixth seeded wildcard team and now find themselves in the semifinals against the Bighorns. Good evening, hockey fans. Welcome back inside the Recplex here in St. Peter's, Missouri. You play fast, we're fine. Play fast and physical, play fing hard. Hey, and have a fing blast doing it, man. Let's go today, boys. Hey, boys, let's go here. Granite City in the red, Helena in the whites. We're underway. Both teams lock in defensively right away. Deskin, Witted, looking for some space. Good drive, puck is loose, right side, top shelf, they score! Power play goal for the Bighorns! And they light the lamp first! Excellent puck passing there, and that ricocheted its way to the top of the net. Aldridge on the power play, and the Bighorns take a 1-0 lead. Shemino, top circle, flipped away, blocker save, puck still loose, badly for it, they score! Puck was loose in front, Brower finishes, and we're tied at one. A couple lucky bounces for each team, and we trade goals 60 some seconds apart. And Brower is having himself a tournament. Granite City notches one more before the second period expires. Schemenauer, top shelf, bar down. And Granite City has taken a lead. It's two to one. Thomas Beaster. Beaster is his stick looks to be broken. Piled on, bottom of the circle, right side shot. Take it, he scores! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! And the big horns, another big chance from Ty Moore. Just what the doctor ordered for the big horns. Wrap around chance, puck is loose, battling for it, still loose, down in front, they score! Loose puck in front, Jack's hammer at home! They reclaim the lead! For side, Hugo top of the circle, he scores! Top shelf, Hugelin! Oh, an uncharacteristic move! He beats French! And the Jacks do make it to the straight. Oh, you The Lumberjacks would get a chance to avenge their West Division Finals loss against the Alexandria Blizzard, who came into the Fraser Cup as the heavy favorite. The Lumberjacks complete their Cinderella storybook ending, scoring the game-winning goal with only seconds left in the final, claiming the franchise's fourth Fraser Cup. Back in Helena, the winds of change are already blowing. Damon Hansen will reprise his role as the team's head coach for the 2023-24 season, set to open in mid-September. 
Nothing really changes for me personnel, uh, personality wise or, or anything. I still demand uh, hard work and, and we want good people in here for uh, this organization and you, you don't really succeed with without good people I, I believe. Um, good people, hard working kids, um, kids that want to be here um, and want to put in the time and the effort to uh, succeed on the ice but not, not just on the ice but off the ice as well. The plan all along is that DeMond Hansen is our guy. We love DeMond as a person, we love him as a hockey coach. Um, Scott coming in, we knew that wasn't going to be a 10-year deal. We didn't know if it'd be a year or two. Um, it turns out it was just a year, but DeMond is ready. He's anxious. Um, he, he wants to, to prove to himself and to us and to everybody that, that, hey, he can do this job. We have the utmost confidence in him. We know he can do the job. The players really enjoy playing for DeMond. Um, and it's going to look different, just like with every coach. It's, it's always going to be a little different. Um, it is really comforting to know that Scott's going to be around to help and, and he's willing. He loves the Bighorns. He loves this community um, and, and he wants to help. And, and when DeMond can lean on him or lean on myself or Jed, or, and, and we're going to bring somebody in to help DeMond on the coaching side um, because the way we do it, the way we want it to be, it's not a one-man job. Um, it's hard. Uh, being a head coach is, is not an easy job and you need support. Um, we want to give DeMond all that support, but we know he's going to be successful. It was tremendous um, for me personally. Uh, I always tell the story. I wanted to come back here and get that opportunity and, and that opportunity uh, uh, came along. and. Um, him being here not only to help this program but to help myself um, be a better person and a better coach was tremendous and I, I can't thank him enough and uh, I'm just glad he's he's chosen to stick around and kind of help me behind the scenes a little bit and, and be a part of this too uh, moving forward. Obviously with Scott stepping down, DeMond taking the helm, Scott still being involved and then uh bought the rink out, now it's, it's locally owned and moving forward that way as well. With this, it, it solidifies what Mike and I have always said about this dude being a community team, being a community rink, and now it really is part of the community. You know, my family lives here, I live here. There's no absentee owner anymore. It's, it's hey, you can pick up a phone and get me and, and hopefully everybody sees that the relationship the fans and everybody have had with the hockey team now carries over into the facility as a whole as well. A thank you to um, all the fans in Helena, all our business partners, the coaches, the players, our billet families, our staff, you know, Jasmine Talley, Brad Oldhouse, Scott, Damon, Jed. I, I shouldn't be just naming names because I'm going to forget any, but forget some people, but Phil Miller at the arena, all the guys that help, all our, uh, all the bartenders, all the security guys, our off-ice officials, Scott Keith with, with Hockey TV. It takes so many people to make this thing happen, um, and so many people do help and we truly appreciate it. We truly appreciate these fans in here every night and those businesses that trust in us and want to be a partner of the Bighorn. So just a humongous thank you from the ownership of the Helena Bighorns to the entire community of Helena and all the Helena Bighorn supporters.